Hi, I'm John and I am the Astronomy Assistant here at the Observatory Science Centre and now we are in Dome A and this is the home of the Thompson 30-inch Reflecting Telescope. Okay, now this telescope is very different to the one you may have at home or one you've seen before. For example, the finder scope is on the bottom and this telescope is very special indeed. Now most people don't notice this small telescope but actually on the 2nd of September 1859 there was a huge explosion on the Sun it was called the Carrington event two people saw this Hodgson and Carrington and this is the very telescope that Hodgson used but the real star of this room is the huge 30 inch now unlike your telescope at home the eyepiece is not attached to the telescope it's on this tower And as you can see, there's the eyepiece right here. And this is all done with mirrors. We don't have eyepieces. That eyepiece there, when I call it an eyepiece, is a hole looking at a mirror. It's crazy, isn't it? That's really, really cool. Now, all telescopes have what's known as a focal ratio. And that is the number of times the big bit, which is your main object lens, in this case, this mirror, 30 inches across, goes into the length or the focal length of your telescope. F1 would be a little tiny short telescope. You look through it, you can see a big area of field of view. F47, which is what this is, tiny field of view. You look through that, you see a much smaller area, but there's a very good reason why this was done. So F47, as you now know, we get a tiny field of view. And the reason being is with this telescope, all we wanted was the light of single stars. You're not gonna get galaxies through this. You can try, you're not gonna see them single starlight because this telescope is a spectrograph it photographed what stars are made from next time you look at a cd pay close attention those color bands are the light in the room you are in being broken down for you isn't that cool so the magic of spectroscopy for the telescope is we get to see colored lines in starlight these color bands like rainbows but these bands are the important part because these are chemical elements within the star we're looking at which tell you what the star's made from Okay. okay, so we see these lines in starlight and these are chemical elements buried within the star itself that's being looked at. And these elements are actually this. Now don't be frightened of this. You've all seen it at school. It's the most beautiful and poetic thing you will ever see. It's the periodic table of elements. Hydrogen is number one, helium. You've got part of the big bang here and, this, and the process of stellar evolution has created many of the other elements here. The important thing is we filled in the gaps. We're good at science. Okay, so that's what the telescope was used for. It was used for telling us what stars are made from. But today, we use this telescope for looking at the stars and enjoying the night sky. Because most people, like yourself, if you haven't got out, you, you don't always get to see the night sky for beautiful telescopes like this. And it's great to see what we see. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this telescope has what's known as the focal ratio, is, is an F47. Hubble is only an F24 by comparison. This is big. This is the biggest gun in Sussex. She's huge. Now, the most common question I am asked on open evenings, how does it work? How does the light get from here to there? And like I said before, it's all done with mirrors. The light will come down the tube and hits the mirror at the base here. It then gets pushed, photons, this is, gets pushed two thirds of the way back up to the lump of metal you can just see jutting out the side there. That's where the focus is controlled from. The light is then pushed down towards the axle where we have a mirror on a very special mechanism and its movement is so perfectly tuned to never leave the mirror at the top of this tower. Wherever this telescope goes, the photons will hit that and bounce down through the eyepiece. The telescope sits between two prongs in this instance. These prongs are pointed to the pole star and as the Earth swings, we only need one motor to drive the telescope because wherever it sits, it will track the stars across that part of the sky. Very simple and very efficient at tracking starlight because we don't have to worry about driving up and down because the Earth's doing that for us. Now, the most amazing thing about all the domes here, the telescopes are inside the domes, brilliant. They can look anywhere you want because we can move the roof. That's also brilliant. But they're not attached to the buildings. They sit on concrete pillars that are driven into the bedrock with the buildings and the domes built around the telescopes. Whatever happens on this floor, the telescope is unaware of it. There's no vibration transmitted to the telescope. If you photograph through these, you are guaranteed a crisp, sharp image. Now, as also previously mentioned, this telescope weighs six and a half tons.
but it is so perfectly balanced with these counterweights you can move it very easily just by using your own arms it swings so efficiently in its design and you need that to keep the balance if you didn't have the telescope evenly balanced you're going to break the mirror it'll be too top heavy or back heavy and you're going to break the scope so it's like a set of scales you've got a set of weights on one side you've got the item on the other and you get the balance right and it will just hover there and it's the same with the telescope mount now this telescope made a number of really cool ex ex discoveries there's a newspaper an old newspaper london pictorial news and there's an image picture of this telescope in that in that newspaper where it photographed the first appearance of Halley's Comet on its return in 1909. It wasn't here till 1910, but this telescope saw it first and pictured it first. That's pretty cool. Okay, so yeah, this telescope discovered the eighth moon of Jupiter in 1908. Philibert Jacques Malotte was making a study of Jupiter 7 or looking at the moons of Jupiter through this telescope. And there in his pictures, when he studied them later, noticed this little tiny speck. He just discovered a brand new moon with this very telescope. That's pretty awesome. Now, the other thing with this telescope, which I haven't mentioned, is I've said we can see the things we can see through it, but actually what I haven't explained is how hard it is to line it up on anything. If you have a telescope of your own or, or you've borrowed one or you've seen somebody else's and you've seen them with a the finder scope, you get that finder scope on the object, you look through the eyepiece and it's there. We don't have that luxury. We've got a couple of finder scopes here, a bit hit and miss. There's no computer. The most technical thing in this room right now is the camera I'm talking to. So to give you an example of, of how, this, how powerful this telescope can be, the Seven Sisters, the Pleiades, and the constellation of Taurus, you should be able to see it around about September time. It's coming up on the horizon. It's beautiful, beautiful seven stars. In any telescope, it will knock your socks off. It's well worth looking at. In this eyepiece, we can only see three of those stars. Now, that's pretty crazy. To get this lined up on a star like Sirius, big and bright, can't really miss it, it's actually difficult because the field of view is so, so small that the star could be anywhere near the eyepiece and we have to hunt for it. But once it's in there, wow, it's great. Now, an astronomer I met who still works at La Palma was telling, was telling me a couple of years ago that one of the detectors on Hubble was actually used on these telescopes. That's pretty awesome. So part of this is in space and I'm well proud of her for that. Okay, so to conclude, as you know, these telescopes came here from London in the 1950s on the 4th of December 1956 this telescope was installed in this room and it's through your support and guys like you and all of you watching this right now that we're able to keep these working for you to see them and I realize that you know the current things have been really difficult for everybody it will change and when it does you've got to come and see this telescope it's worth every moment of your time thank you